What is going on, my cross Tekken bread bins? Uh, C4IQ here, uh, another Supremo podcast. Uh, I have Theory Fighter today yeah. on the podcast. Uh, everyone knows who he is. Everyone knows who he is. If you don't, then you get to know. Uh, definitely check him out on YouTube. Uh, quality, quality commentating. Definitely very informative. Uh, <laughs> I must say. Uh, so yeah, today we're gonna go over everyone's favorite thunder leg fight, Lady Chun Li. Yes. Uh, I mean, I f- general consensus I feel is everyone thinks she's pre pre high tier anyway. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> just about right. That's why yeah. I picked her. I was like, oh, so who's like one of the better characters in this game? Oh, Chun Li. Well, I guess I'll learn her. Yeah. Then, I guess. There you go. I mean, yeah. in Cross Tekken, I think uh, Pick and Chung Lee, even just to learn the game, isn't a bad idea. Yeah, uh, she, I, she's she's pretty good at that for sure. I mean, there's not many games I think. Well, I should pick this character just to learn the mechanics of the game. But Cross Tekken, I think I'd really advise like picking her and maybe I want to say I want to say Gazuya. Uh, I think if you can play them two characters, you kind of got the emphasis on how you should win the game. Well, maybe like a Jin as well. Jin's pretty yeah. good. And uh, doesn't have as high an execution barrier as Kazuya. Mm, yeah, yeah, no, you're probably right. I, I was thinking either Kazuya or Nina. Because, I mm. mean, Nina kind of gives you the whole... Uh, the whole wake-up game. If you yeah. can... if you can, uh, When you knock someone down, if you're playing Nina you learn a lot of the opponent's options to wake up and you know what beats what with a uh, low crushing moves and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, cross Tekken, definitely I would say that. I mean, stuff like Marvel, just pick you like. Uh, yeah. And, and then find the gimmick. But with cross Tekken, there's some characters you should play just to get the, uh, the idea of the game down. Uh, and try I know, from my extent, understanding of Marvel, it's like pick a team you like and then put Virgil and Doom on it instead of your much. characters. Pretty much. <laughs> Literally, if you pick a team and it's not working, it's like you have to throw away one of your characters and pick Doom. Pick Missiles or <laughs> pick Virgil. And you know what? I, I hate to admit it, but I, I did do that. When I used to play Cap, uh, who did I play? Cap, Wesker, Trish. And it was like, ugh, this this team isn't working. And I had to, I chucked out Doom. Oh, no, I chucked in Doom for Cap and it worked and I thought oh but I want to play Cap I swapped out West I put Doom in it worked it just doesn't matter uh, <laughs> and it's sad it's sad it's sad when your team needs a character it's like all of these characters and I have it's literally making the game a two character team yeah two character team plus one but <laughs> we're not talking about that depressing game right now I, <laughs> I, I love that game but I I love Street Fighter uh, Cross Tekken because it's a break from that I said to my mate like I do love Marvel. I've never stopped liking it, but it is nice to play a game where I deserve to win or the opponent legitimately beat me. And mm. Cross Second is definitely that game. Right. So I guess let's get into Chun Li then. Yeah. Um, so uh, the first thing was uh, footsies. Yep. And this is like Chun Li's kind of strong point. Um, she has a free frame jab, which is pretty pretty essential in this game because there are a lot of moves that are only punishable by free frame moves and having a free frame jab means that you get a very very high damage conversion um another strong point of her is she has the quickest um i think equal with a few other characters maybe akuma the quickest walk forward speed and she has the quickest walk back speed in the game really meaning she yeah right <laughs> whoa i did not yeah. know that um so she she can play footsies with anyone like she's never getting outpaced um there's very few characters that can keep up with her. akuma like i said offensively he can keep up with her but defensively not so much um mm. she the reason that she is so incredibly strong is pretty much 99 percent due to her stand strong um yep. and this is a button that was nerfed it is a slower start-up move now. It's, uh, I believe, seven frames. Don't quote me on that. But it's uh, it's a lot slower now than it used to be. Yeah, it's seven frames. And um, it's cancelable into lightning legs, um, which I'll get into a bit more later. But the reason it's so good when it's cancelled into lightning legs is, unlike most moves in the game, 
when you cancel a stand strong into lightning legs, it moves her really far forward. So you get all the connect, uh, all the hits of lightning legs. And if you connect a full mashed lightning legs, it's plus one on block. So you get to frame trap. And, um, that's, that's primarily why she's so good. There are a few things that be like, it's not got the best hitbox anymore. Uh, you can like crouch strong it. Um, and you can like stand jab it, which is all pretty effective, but it's kind of a risk reward thing. And she is nearly always at the better end of that risk reward. Um, the other thing is her stand fierce. It's, uh, it's like stand strong, but it's harder to convert from. It's got a little bit, uh, a little bit better hitbox. It's still seven frames and it is really, really, really hard to punish because it's just, even though it's minus three on block and you can't cancel it unless you launch, it's the range you can do it is pretty ridiculous. Um, crouch short is, you know, it's a standard crouch short. It's very quick. It's, um, uh, where is it? It's three frames, which is once again pretty ridiculous. Um, it plus two on block. So you, it's kind of like a ghetto frame trap. Um, and it's, it's just a very, very strong pressure tool and footsie tool. It makes fighting Kazuya really easy. Um, and, uh, I think the only other button that is of note, um, on the ground is her crouch medium punch, which goes under fireballs. Um, so if you predict someone's going to fireball instead, unlike most characters where you need to jump, she just does a crouch strong and then uh, buffers into a stand uh, hard punch, uh, which will basically be out pretty much all the fireballs in the game. So she always has that against zoners, which is great. Um, she suffers a little bit in the anti-air department. Her anti-airs are all good, but they're very situational. Um, like they kind of always have been. She has like stand fierce, stand forward and down forward, uh, light kick. Down forward light kick being the best because you convert into a full combo, which is amazing. Yeah, that, isn't um, that the one that kind of sends you straight into a juggle state? Yes. And then you get like the, uh, the back forward, um, target combo, which right. launches. So it's it's a really good move. It's a little bit wonky to use sometimes. The hitbox on it isn't like the best thing in the world. So things like Hayachi's jump roundhouse kind of beat it out uh, a lot of the time just because of how like ridiculous the hurtbox is on that move. Yeah, um, it, yeah. <laughs> it, it's no DP. She doesn't have like a DP, but it, all of these things are good. And unlike most of the Street Fighter cast, she can convert of an anti-air, which most characters can't without meter. Right. So it's one of the reasons why she, she's so strong. Or a, a uh, kind of hit, sort of. Yeah. Uh, what's it? Yeah. Trying you to get like... Uh, Raven. Does not Raven got that as well? Or does it have to be a can of hit with that one? Uh, yeah, it has to be a count hit for you to right, convert okay. with Raven. Um, so she doesn't have that because you're straight in a juggle state, which is it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but uh, air to air, she's also pretty good. She's got like jump fierce, which is like, you know, her go to in pretty much all street fighters. Um, and it puts you in a juggle state once again. So you get to convert um, even if you don't get a counter hit and it serves as a good air to air. Um, and that's pretty much all her footsies for the most part. Um, I like honestly, I, when you've got their only weaknesses versus a very select few characters, your anti airs can be a bit wonky. Um, honestly, I'd give her like a 16 out of 20, maybe a 17. Like it's pretty much perfect for the most part, her footsies. When you start to talk about her walk speed and add it all together, you really can't ask for anything more than she's already got. Like all she's missing is like a straight DP that goes through everything, you know? Yeah, so it's it's basically just that her anti air game, uh, well her grand air, her grand air yeah. game isn't, it's it's there, but it's just not, it's not like Cody, uh, back medium punch. Like, yeah, it's, it's just not as reliable. You can't, you don't have a universal button like yeah. a lariat that deals with every jump in. Um, uh, what, so yeah, that's what would it. you say about her her fireball game? Is that not? Do you not even? Um, it's <laughs> it's not really necessary to be honest. Like. It's there, 
But like, there's no matchup where you would rather be throwing fireballs than using normals. Like, you could say maybe a Jack or Zangief, but you don't have, you have a good recovery. It's kind of average. You've got, um, let's have a look. Koken, um, you've got 37 frames of recovery, which is, um, it's pretty good. You know, it's, it's not bad. Um, mm. it's not anything to write home about. Um, so you can, you can definitely punish it. And when you've got such good normals, you don't really want to put yourself to that risk. That's fair enough. I was only because we were talking about Footsies, I thought, uh, she has got a fireball energy. And I was like, is it, is it just, is it a thing where it's not good or it's just that her normals are better? But it's clearly her normals are just better. Yep. Okay. Definitely. Uh, yeah, I mean, from what you're saying, <coughs> a, sav- a 17 sounds more than fair. Her, I mean, her flaws, by the sounds of it, uh, like, personally, I don't really see any flaws in her. Her grand game is so solid, it's like, someone jumping in on her isn't really uh, really that threatening unless it's someone like you said like High Archie where they've got such a dominating jumping attack yeah uh, but with the walk speed and the back dash like it's kind of like well yeah if worse comes to worse I can just get out of the way yeah pretty much I think the the only like um the only redeeming factor is the fact that she builds you a lot of meter as well with lightning legs because it builds quite a lot of meter for the opponent. Not ridiculous amounts, but it builds mm. enough um, that you get quite an early alpha counter. And like I said, her sand strong is amazing. It's not unbeatable though. Like, you know, a Ryu crouch strong does do well against it. So it's, it's better than anyone else in the cast, in my opinion, just her ground game, like ground to ground. Um, but it's de- it's definitely it's got flaws. It's just yeah. not unbeatable. So that's fair enough. But it's, it sounds like it's a, it's a solid one, but it's more that it doesn't have flaws. But there's gaps in the players' tendencies. If they over abuse something, there's ways around it, sort of thing. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Uh, right. So yep, yeah, seventeen out of twenty. Uh, well, she's off to a good start. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, which one do you want to go for next? Uh, meter build. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so. Me building, I kind of touched on in footsies. Um, the, she is pretty much the best in the game at building meter, um, through blocking, which is pretty cool. Um, she also has long ass combos with like, uh, her target combo launching and stuff. Mm. The solo combos build quite a lot of meter. Um, so you tie this with your, uh, lightning legs pressure where you can do things like stand strong lightning legs which is mashed into jab lightning legs, which is a frame trap and it's, or it's a block string unless you want to try and do something risky. And, um, that builds just ridiculous meter. And like I said, it builds the opponent meter, but not enough for it to be really threatening. The only point in which she can't really build as meter as quickly is when the opponent has meter. Um, so once they have meter, if you get hit by lightning legs, you will alpha counter every time and pressure her. Um, what? So that like her meter building, like in a neutral game where there's no meter in like on any of the um, characters, like the start, like she literally no one can compare to that. Like no one. That is straight up the best in the game. Uh, as for a number, I I would say I'd say an eighteen if you're just looking at the pure meter game. Actually. Maybe a 19, to be honest. Like, if you're looking at the pure meter game, like, she just builds it quicker than no other person. Like, easily, with lightning legs alone. And even the combos build a lot, a lot of meter compared to most of the cast. Just shoot how many hits it is. So. I mean, I, I was going to agree with you, but I, I kind of still do. Uh, even with her combos, because she's not really used it, she doesn't have to use meters, uh, meter to end a combo, for example, or to extend her combo because the target combo with the uh, the back forward I think it is yeah yeah uh, I mean that combo uh, there's no meter required to make it any better like using meter really doesn't make a difference in that combo like it does no nope. so I mean as well as gaining it she she's resourceful with it because she doesn't have to use it <laughs> yeah yeah she, 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 I I li- I there's no bad battery character than her like Definitely. I said I think the only flaw is which I don't even 
I'm not even sure whether you would tie it with her meat again. It's the fact that you get alpha countered for lightning legs um, once you both have meter. But I don't even think that's really a flaw because you're forcing them to, to burn meter. Yeah, I think that's to burn a, meter. That's a plus, if anything, because you, you can't die off an of alpha counter. Well, unless they do alpha counter, then can you do alpha counter uh, switch anymore? They're not doing that. They can't do that. Out, yeah. Right. So yeah, you can't you can't die off alpha counter. So uh, making them use making them use the resources for pressure that is costing you nothing seems pretty beneficial to the Chung Li player. Uh, yeah. The only reason I knock off a point is because uh, she can't bait you to uh, alpha counter while you'll be... Like, so, right. you know, some characters, which, like, you're doing a block string and you see the alpha counter and you'll do a reversal as yeah. a reaction. Um, she can't do that because she's locked in lightning legs, obviously. So yeah. that's the only reason I knock off, like, one point because it's really not that big of a deal uh, yeah. at this point. I mean, I think the only time I see any Chun Li players use meter is if they do uh, a boost chain uh, and they want to make it safe, so they do like EX Kokoken. Yeah, uh, it's that's just it. for like random. It's really just for fucking up. Yeah, like, basically. Or if you just want um, like converting off a lightning legs, although you can do stand jab into target combo. It's a one frame link. Um, uh, but it, like in reality, that doesn't matter. It's if you're playing it optimal, yeah. You know, it shouldn't it shouldn't matter. And that's it, really. Uh, I was gonna say uh, one factor that might knock it down a bit is uh, her meet her her gain a meter outside of the block string. So obviously, because you can whiff normals like you can a third strike to gain meter. Uh, mm-hmm. Has she got anything that could gain her meter quickly that way? That's like sort of safe, or I mean, her her crouch forward. Um, actually, yeah, she has, thinking about this a bit better. If someone's zoning you with fireballs, you'll rise out the other side of the screen. You can just crouch strong under it, um, under the fireball safely for the most part, unless they're like, got a really good recovery. Um, you can just crouch strong under it and, uh, that'll build you meter. <coughs> also, cause she has a two hit fierce, uh, jump fierce, you can neutral jump fireballs and hit fierce, uh, which will build you actually quite a lot of meter. Um, over fireballs, or you can just do um, Hassan shoes, like the ones that don't move you too far, to right. far forward. A little bit riskier, but it's still good. Uh, well, yeah, that shut me up. Uh, I didn't think she had good. <laughs> I didn't think she had good like full screen ways of gaining meter, but <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, she does clearly. So uh, yeah, did you, was it uh, eighteen or nineteen you was going for? Nineteen. Nineteen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Chung is is scoring high. Uh, nice. Uh, right. Next, did you want to do uh, comeback potential? Yes. Sure. I think this is the only thing she lacks in. Um, like in reality, um, charge attack dash cancels off stand strong, which is a common thing for Chun to use. It's not safe. It's punishable by jabs, um, by a lot of things really. Um, like uh, you smell electric ring god fist. That dude will crouch fierce you with Ryu every time you do a charge ca- dash cancel on him mm. uh, into like a full combo, which would do half hell. So in reality, she's not going to open you up. Like none of that's a high low mix up. She can't jump because her jump's too floaty. Um, it's mm. just it's just you can't really make a comeback with her. Like I'm what you will try and do as a Chun player is you do like. Crouch short, crouch short, walk forward, and then because she's got one of the best or the best walk speed, she'll do crouch short, crouch short, walk forward, and then either rule launch or <laughs> throw to beat right. the uh, crouch tech. And it's a really good mix up because of her walk speed. Like you can bait people into doing crouch short really easily because of how quickly she's in your face. Yeah. Um, and those both like. In reality, you can just take the throw. Um, depending on the time, there's a few seconds left. They've got a substantial life lead. They can just block and take the throw and then react if you jump. And that's kind of it. Um, she has no way to wake you up. Hasanchu can be launched. Uh, if you see someone Hasanchu, you just raw launch it. I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, because it, hit, it hits like um, on the grounds and stuff that you can just raw launch for free. And that's... A pretty ridiculous punish. Uh, for yeah, a, anything you can roll launch is... 
it's kind of like the most optimal way, sort of, with most characters, unless you're like Azuya or Nina, the ultimate yeah. way to get the most damage off of a punish is a raw launch. Exactly, and that's on reaction, not even on a guess. So, like, you just get ready to raw launch whenever you block something from her. That, on top of the fact that, like, you're going to have to, you're going to be forced to do a lot of low attacks if you want a frame trap, which can all be raw launched. If you want to do stand attacks and pressure with lightning legs, you can be half countered. And they, that's just, it doesn't make for a good comeback potential, honestly. It's, it's just not very good at all. Um, but because of the walk speed and between raw launch and throw, which is very risky, I'd give it like a seven. Um, because those things are still very good, but they're just, they don't compare to like, a Jin 50-50 or a Kazuya 50-50, which can be like near enough 100% safe. And, you know, it can also be like 500 damage without tagging or using meter. Like, and that's a lot better than, you know, a measly like 180 damage uh, while risking losing the entire game or at least yeah. half your health. So, yeah, uh, that's what I could. Uh, a quick, uh, would you do you want to touch upon her the her Pandora game? Uh, both ways, uh, Pandora in Pandora into Chung Li and using Chung Li to Pandora into your for you obviously yes. Zangief. Uh, I'm not too sure. I haven't really seen people Pandora using the Pandora with Chung Li, so I don't know if she's got like a stand set up or uh, okay. a, a jungle set up. But I've seen people Pandora in, into Chung Li and then using like the super to go through things. For example, if you've got I don't, someone who can't get around fireballs, uh, someone like uh, Bison for the most part. I know you can EX through and stuff, but say you've got Bison, someone, while you throws a fireball, you Pandora and then go straight into Chungli Super, and then the Chungli Super goes through the fireball, stuff like that. Yep, that, that's a really good point. She she does uh, well, start with going into, Pan, into Pandora, uh, say Pan, Chungli is the Pandora character, right? Yeah. So, but like you said, she has a super. Pandora is five frames to start up. So she, you can reaction Pandora a fireball with Ryu if that's going to win you the game. But once again, like I said earlier, she doesn't have any way to open you up. So if you reaction Pandora uh, and super, I believe it's 340 damage. I don't remember off the top of my head. I know it's 340 something or around that. Yeah. Um, which is damage. It's not incredible, though, is it? And if that doesn't kill, and maybe the throw afterwards won't kill, then you're probably Damn. not going to win. Uh, yeah. And that's really it. Um, but as, like you said, for the most part, it does add an element of versatility, and it does add a little bit of comeback potential. Um, on the other hand... Um, Bringing someone in with Chun Li is really good. Um, she has a jump cancelable uh, close roundhouse, so you can do your B and B target combo into stomp, uh, jump roundhouse, and land. Do a close roundhouse. Do down down up Pandora, which is a jump cancel Pandora combo, um, and then it will bring in your other character. Um, with Geef, like just in my example, I will then do a jab green hand. If I jab green hand and then do a jump knee, it will be in the front. If I do a fierce green hand, it will be in the back. And if you roll in any of those situations, I get a full punish. Um, so it's she has ways to set up Pandora for sure. And being able to do that from B&B is really good. Um, Definitely. But as someone that uses Pandora, she's shocking because... The, the common way to set up Pandora is like um, three or four, three things, I think, which is ground bounce, wall bounce, and stagger. And she will nearly always never connect a full super, occasionally in the corner versus big characters. If I ground bounce you and super mid-screen, she won't get the full animation. In the corner, right. she might do. Okay. And that's uh... kind of it. I was going to say, uh, could you touch up on the uh, the jump cancel a bit? Uh, I'll, I'll get it, uh, kind of, because uh, it sounds like something you can do in Marvel where you jump cancel your launch to get a special at. Uh, yeah, it's but, exact same. 
is is it it's the exact same thing. So you're doing the normal, but because you can't cancel into anything but a jump, uh, yes. you put the jump input in, so the animation of the move finishes, so you can Pandora. Yep, you're basically just cancelling the move into a jump because you can't, you obviously can't cancel normals into Pandora, but the jumping frames, there's three frames it takes to get off the ground, and in those three frames you can cancel into a move. So you cancel into Pandora, obviously, and uh, that's it really, right. and that allows you to set up. Cool. Uh, so uh, including those as well, uh, does it change the score a little bit, or? <sighs> I like it, if anything, it would push it up to like an eight, maybe, because yeah. you can set up Pandora, um, which you, uh, like like I said, it's I mean like getting heart like just below half score is definitely not bad, you know what I mean? For oh yeah, no, definitely potential. not. Um, but it's just not really like it's not nothing crazy, you know. That's fair enough. I mean, like yeah, she doesn't seem like uh, she is definitely more of a pressure instead of like she doesn't really open people up. She opens people up because the, uh, the opponent is getting frustrated or makes a mistake. Uh, if the opponent yeah. just wants to hold back and doesn't, main, doesn't mind you getting meter from your lightning legs, I don't really see Chung Lee doing much. <laughs> no, it's, it's a case of, like, she opens you up because she forces you to do something yeah. in the early game. Like, in the early game, you're just taking so much chip, she's building, like, she's going to be on three bars super quick, way quicker than you will. Yeah. And... It's like you have to do something sooner or later to actually Stop get it. a lead. Yeah. But once you've got that lead, she can't really make a comeback on you. Right. Okay. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. The the score definitely reflects that. Uh. Right. Next, we've got. Uh. I think we should do wake up. Okay. Her wake up is once again one of her weaker points. Um. The ex spinning bird kick. Not only can it does it have a really bad um, hitbox, um, it's a, it's full body invulnerable, but it's also only for nine frames, which isn't very long. Um, it's very easily baited. It's seven frames start up, so it can be safe jumped. Um, it like characters can do things where they just land in the middle of you, and it avoids the whole of the spinning bird kick for some reason. Awesome. Um, yeah. yeah, it's stupid. Or they can just neutral jump. Everyone has a response to it. Um, it's just not good. The 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 strong thing about it is the fact that you can get a relatively safe tag off it if they block it. But there shouldn't be a reason why they block it because if they're good, they're option <coughs> selecting that every time. Um, and because you have to hold down for it, you know, you're not going to be rolling, obviously, because you can't do reversals on rolls. And it's just... It's just not a good panic move. If someone's holding down for like 20 minutes with a Chun Li, then you know they've got the spinning bird kick and you just stop pressure. And that's kind of it, really. It's just not, it's way too punishable, way too slow. It's not great. The only other thing she has is her backdash, and her backdash is fantastic. There are a certain portion of the cast that can't deal with it, um, just because of how quick it is. Um, but once again, it's the sort of thing that gets option selected. It's one of those things that's great in a lower level of play, but gets shitty pretty quick once someone's good. Um, right. uh, it's like if you play against like a Ryu, he'll option select Tatsu it every time. And because he's doing it from a safe jump, if you hear a spinning bird kick, he blocks that. If you backdash, he will Tatsu after you. So it's kind of like you can cover everything pretty easily with a lot of characters. Geef can do the exact same thing with VX screen hand, which will go through its being good kick and punish back dash. So it's not it's not great. Um uh, but as I said, it is specific to certain members of the cast where it actually is a real big issue to deal with. Um I like as a grade I I would give it a Probably, probably a six to be honest. Six, I think yeah. it's yeah. I think it's one of those things that once once people get accustomed to it and know like sand training mode, figuring it out, mm. none of that is a particularly scary wake up option. Honestly, uh, would you say so? Basically, the the best thing to do with Chungli on wake up is block. Yep, 
block block an alpha counter. Her alpha counter is not even good. Um, it's once again the spinning bird kick, and you can safe jump her alpha counter, which is ridiculous. But that's some alpha two shit. Um, <laughs> you, <laughs> you can safe jump it because it's, uh, it's slightly slow. So um, you can safe jump right, the alpha okay. counter and you know you punish it really. Yeah, even if even if we were considering, I think we could consider alpha counter as a wake up option because it's all it all is is one guess. Uh, yeah. one gets on the block and then yeah you can do that so even in that respect her wake up isn't even good then sort of thing no it's minus four so even if you have to block it you still get a punish you know it's not like yeah, it's just not good <laughs> uh, right I didn't even know it was that bad but that's good just just go in on her then uh, yep <laughs> once you get the knockdown uh, right so last of all we've got damage uh, she'll probably <laughs> pick up some points where she lost uh, she lost on the uh, potential of comeback in and the wake up. So. Yes, her damage it's um, it's incredibly solid damage. It's um, I'd say about average, a little bit above in some cases. If you get a very optimal punish, I think her her optimal non meter combo is close roundhouse, mash lightning legs, stand jab, target combo, and then you follow that up with a combo. Um, which is a lot of damage. Uh, it's a little bit situational to get that much damage. It's not too hard to set up, though. Um, it's not like a Kazuya where she converts ridiculous damage off, like, you know, a crouch forward or something like that. It's also not like... Um, but if she has a little bit of meter if you do like a really long reaching stand strong and do like a non mash lightning legs, you do get a free um, character swap, which is really good. And it's really easy to confirm. So you tally that all up. It's, it's like a 14 where it's, it's, it's definitely above average, how easily she converts, how easily she can hit confirm safely hit confirm, never really have to have any reactions to hit confirm or actually try. Yeah. Um, that's like dissing myself, but it's true. <laughs> um, yeah, you never really have to put that much effort in. It's, it, it's not Kazuya, it's not Steve, but it's still ridiculous. Um, so yeah, I, I'd say that's probably an apt score for it. Uh, what was that, a 14, you say? Yeah, 14. 14. Uh, yeah, I thought, I thought it would be a bit more on the damage end. I mean, that's only because I'm thinking about uh, the situations or how, where she gets the damage from as well. Uh, not just how much she's actually doing, but uh, like I said, like raw launching from of, uh, from Zangief to Chung Li. I'm guessing you can get more damage that way than the other way? Um, no, you get more damage if you're solo. Um, the raw launch itself adds quite a few points onto the, um, like the juggle count, I think it's called. <laughs> Right, yeah. So you don't get like a extended follow up. Um, it, like, don't get me wrong, her damage is still really good. It's just like a Kazuya can convert any poke into 500 damage without meter and without tag cancel. Um, Chun Li from like the maximum stand strong range has to either hit confirm into a boost chain, which is a little bit risky. Or go into lightning legs, which you won't get the mashed one, and that yeah. won't be plus, and you'll have to tag cancel. So it has a little bit of a meter requirement. I mean, maybe you could boost it up to like 15, thinking about it, but it's just there's a little bit of a meter requirement there at certain max ranges. Um, right, okay. But yeah, that's uh, it. Yeah, I'll boost up to 15, because, I mean, the whole time we were talking about it, we didn't even think, we didn't consider her EX stuff. Uh, and she, obviously, like you're saying, she builds a lot of meter, so she, she's probably going to have meter to spare if she wants to get in a little bit more damage. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you encompass it all, I mean, I guess that makes sense. If she builds meter quickly, she has access to a lot of meter, so uh, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, 15 seems fair. Uh, right, overall... Uh, Chung Lee scores. Well, oh, actually, let's go through them quickly again. Uh, Forty, she's got she's got a seventeen. Uh, compact potential, she got eight. Meter build, she got nineteen. Wake up, she got a six. Yeah, and damage, we just done it as a fifteen. So overall, she got sixty five out of a hundred. Uh, that seems that sounds kind of low, but obviously it's the first character we've done. So 
Yeah. Uh, I think it's one of those things where it's like, like in um, in my mind, people haven't been playing against Chun Li correctly, in the sense that like, if you play, I played Ken for a long time, right? And if you look at how you want to fight Chun Li, right? You you safely try and build meter by like trying to trade in a little bit in footsies, maybe even taking a few hits here and there. Once you've got meter as Ken, all you do is you alpha counter, which you get a safe jump from, you safe jump, or you just go for a straight pressure, you option select a backdash, which you can convert off fully, and then you just rinse and repeat. It's kind of like a doubt him in the regards that she has no wake up. If you corner a Chun Li, she's probably going to lose. Like, right. there is no way for a Chun to get out. She has a wall jump, but if you're not ready for the wall jump, then you're probably not really aware of the matchup very much. So it's um it does seem low, but she does have quite big flaws in her comeback and her um wake, know, up. Uh, wake up. So Yeah, no, no, I mean it definitely uh seems that way by the way you're explaining it. Uh you I mean, obviously I've not been playing it solidly uh cross taking that long, so I've kind of come away from it for a while, but even back then I could still see the the weakness at in her like obviously when she's doing her doing her thing her stand uh, her stand strong yeah her stand strong her lightning legs her pressure game in that respect you don't see how vulnerable she is once you got the knockdown uh, yeah I mean that's the thing it's kind of like your our views of Chun Li are kind of a bit jaded from Justin Wong and Ricky Ortiz you know what I mean like yeah when you go like yeah, this character is probably the best footsies in the game and probably the best meet again in the game. You look at that and then you give that to Justin Wong and Ricky <laughs> Ortiz, like, yeah. the best footsies in the world. You go, this character's fucking ridiculous. You know what I mean? Like, and I remember she, she does definitely have ridiculous things, but yeah. it's, it's kind of like, it is a little bit jaded by, um, like Justin Wong just being the, like the best in the and Ricky being the best in the world at footsies, you know. Yeah, uh, it's it's basically cat people uh, players playing her at her best. They're playing her yeah. as if she had a nineteen out of twenty or meeting game or a seventeen out of twenty in footsies, but they're not. Yeah. they're not put in a situation where they have to have a make a comeback or have to guess on a wake up. They're just not yeah. put in that situation, so you, so you don't see how hard it is. So. Yeah, exactly, and there's a reason why Justin Wong plays Horang second, uh, plays Horang, and he also play uh, Ricky plays Rufus because they want to be able to make comebacks, you know, and you know they have a second character so they can make a comeback. Even though I think Hor- uh, Justin plays Horang first, but he has overhead mix-ups and he has gimmicks to make comebacks. So does Rufus, and you know it. Like we said in the um, other bit where we were talking about how, you know, team dynamics does play a big part yeah. in this game. And flaws for a character can be covered up by other characters. Yeah. You don't need a good comeback potential when you've got Kazuya seconds. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he'll do that all for you. Don't fucking worry about it. It's fine. You know? Yeah, definitely. Uh, it, yeah, it definitely does show that, yeah, Chung Lee's a good character. But like you said, if she hasn't got someone in the back to to make a comeback if need be, uh, it it, it kind of takes away how good she is. Uh, if someone gets the first hit on Chung Lee and then they have the life lead, Chung Lee has to change up her game a little bit. Uh, and then if she doesn't get the life lead or she gets hit a couple more times and she has to come back, they have to tag out. They have to bring in the next character. Otherwise, she's just gonna be gonna she's just gonna game meet her the best yeah. part so uh, yeah. that's it man that's, that's really it that's, that's the general game plan against Chun Lee is just get, get a life lead hold down back and then alpha counter and try and do a pressure like do some pressure on her that's really all you have to do I mean it, it, I mean I'm simplifying it obviously yeah. but in <laughs> like I mean the fact is like we said her footsies her damage and her meter game are so good that she will, like, if you do get hit, you know, you're going to take the, like, full brunt of things. You know, she's consistent. She's so, so consistent. And that's what makes her one of the best characters in the game. 
uh, for you, uh, just a quick question: Where would you rank her, like in your in your mental tier list? Um, the bottom of top five. Uh, so top five is generally considered um, Jin, Kazuya, Law, Nina, and Shun. I think she's at the bottom of that, not because she is the worst, but because she has flaws. Like I think that uh, Law has flaws as well, but just because like he can do some of these things at just a tinsy bit better than Shun. But then when you when you when you think like when you've got the best footsies in the world and you're playing the character with the best footsies in the game, <laughs> those two things mesh together <laughs> and they make you one boring motherfucker. Yep. They make you an incredibly good player. Yeah, um, and that's kind of it, really. I definitely agree with that one. Definitely. Uh, I mean, footsies control all. Like if you've got footsies down, you you don't need gimmicks. You don't need don't need a combat mechanic because you just foot yourself to the wind. Footies beat anything. If you've got yeah. your space in Dan, then there's nothing the opponent can do. Yeah, I think that's one thing we're not really saying. Oh. And it doesn't really one sec, man. Shot. One sec, mate. You've you've gone to a uh, Jack Cross mode again. Sorry, one sec. Ah, now you've made me have to do more work. Now, now I've got to edit. Ah, oh. uh, sorry, man. Nah, my right. mic has a tendency to <laughs> turn me into fucking sentinel sometimes. Yeah, that was that was crazy. But it's all right. It's all right. I'll, I'll sort <laughs> that. Uh, what were you saying? You were saying about oh, um, what the tier list doesn't really reflect. That's it. Yep. Um, Cross Tekken is a game about consistency. It is a game where yeah, you can fifty fifty someone twice and win, but if you're Justin Wong and you don't have to do 50-50s, you can just hit Stan Strong's the entire game and convert them into solid damage. Mm. You are not putting yourself at any risk at any point because you've got the best walk speed in the game. You're not going to whiff that button. You're never going to whiff it if you're good enough. And you don't you don't take a risk yet. Kazuya does have he does 50-50s. If I guess you're going to let you win Godfist, I'll crouch short here and I'll punish it fully. Like, she may be lacking in certain things, but she is the best for consistency, you know? Yeah. I think that, I think that's really it. I mean, this tier list probably won't reflect that because it's quite hard to show that in a, um, you know, in, in the kind of, uh, like in a tier list, like how you don't really include the meta game in a tier list, mm. but that is, that's generally it. Yeah, that's pretty much like the unwritten rule, like this rule of thumb. Uh, footsies seem to, uh, I think across most games, footsies, unintent, uh, well, subconsciously are always, uh, attached to a top tier character. Uh, like take Fei Long, for example, his footsie game is ridiculous. Yeah. And he was sort of top tier, regardless of a, uh, a player using him. He was just considered top tier because of his records and stuff. And that's a footsie. T- well, it, most things are a footsie tool, but that combined with uh, his like his links that he has from like Crouch, Fierce, and all that sort of stuff, it just made him get damage off of great normals. So, uh, and even if you you can translate that to like a sort of a Marvel game, like Zero is considered top tier. His footsies, his Buster, and his Lightning, they're, they're all footsies. Yep. So. And that's why he's so hard to beat and so hard to, uh, yeah, to beat. Like, and and it all being safe <laughs> helps as well. So, yeah. I mean, okay. I'm so glad I don't play that game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 just thinking about putting it on like just depresses me a little bit. <laughs> just depresses me. I'll probably put on cross tech and probably try a Kuma and Steve. That's what I've been thinking. But yeah. Uh, any shout outs you want to do, mate? Uh, um. Again. Same as last time, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm on YouTube, Fear Fire. I do commentaries, I do guides. I don't do the ele- uh, excellent adventure thing. Ah, I'm, I'm 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 not that charming or that funny. So I'm just I'm just here to tell you stats and frame data. I'm one of those people. <laughs> um, also, go go to go to hard gaming. Yeah, go to hard gaming. Best. Definitely <laughs> support. Stop typing. Yeah, stop typing, support offline. Even if you don't play fine games, just go there, play House of the Dead. Yeah, House they've of got, the Dead is endless fun. They've got Time Crisis now. Oh, dude. 
They've got Time Crisis. Yeah, they still got King of... They've got Donkey Kong. Uh, they've got Puzzle Fighter. Oh, I need to... I, I said to them last time I went there, they need to do a Puzzle Fighter tournament. They do. Man, if we do if we do a Tetris tournament, I'll bust man up at Tetris. Real talk. I haven't played that in a while, you know. But I, oh. I, I think I still... I'll, I downloaded it from my PS3. And I'll, they, you can upload, like, replays. And some people's replays are... They're like they're downloading into the Matrix. It's ridiculous. They're not even... They're not even, like, considering the pattern at the bottom or what brick they've got in they're just, they're just dropping it and it's yeah, anyway anyway <laughs> yeah uh, shout out to Tetris shout out to Tetris shout out to Tetris but uh, yeah have you got, got uh, have you got Twitter or anything like that or, uh, um, yeah. yeah I'm on Twitter it's very fire I, I you know I occasionally use it uh, I, you know we English don't really go for that Twitter thing generally do we nah like, I've yeah, got Twitter as well but it's like what do I post yeah, I guess it's kind of like it's one of those things I go on there and it's like, oh, the FTC drama again, brilliant. I won't open this for another week. Yeah, you know, and that's kind of it, really. Definitely. Uh, but yeah, thanks again uh, to Theory Fire for coming on. We'll definitely get you one for when we do the uh, Zangief. Sweet. Uh, if anyone wants to join in, it's not like a it's not a two man podcast. I don't mind having three people on, four probably <laughs> max though. Uh, don't really want them to go on for too long. Uh, I've, I'm renowned for doing long podcasts. Uh, Dude, shouts. that was like all day yesterday. Oh my, yeah, I know, I know, and I'm the one who has to listen to it. I've, go, I've got to go through it, edit it, <laughs> then uploading. The uploading takes literally a night. I have to go to sleep and leave it on, and I and then I can't play online because there's lag. So I'm literally in training mode while I, I, it's horrible. From now on, <laughs> nothing more than an hour. Nothing more than an hour. Dude, I can't wait to get back to uni. I used to just turn up with like gigs worth of commentaries and like tutorials and just upload while I was at uni the entire time it's brilliant oh you know what I need to I need to do I mean I do like 12 hour uh, night shifts at work Mm. so I I should be doing it then to be fair yeah Uh, just yeah just upload all the stuff I mean I've got uh, yeah the conversation we had last time uh, yesterday uh, people are going to have to hear that the Pokemon stuff was too funny Dude, uh, I, I was like crying at one point. You guys thought I'd gone because I was just, I had to mute my microphone because I was just in was it tears. That, was that what it was? I was just, yeah, I was just like, I was smoking at the time. I was so like coughing up my lungs. I was just laughing so much. We were just shouting about like who was the best Pokemon. It was just the fucking funniest thing I've ever heard. Like, yeah, every, all you guys, you will, you will hear that sometime when I get round to it. But that was like four hours of mad nonsense. <laughs> Uh, before that, I was talking to Dark or Shouts to Tim for about two, two and a half hours, basically doing what we done just a minute ago about explaining how we should do the things. Went on a mad tangent and we started talking about it was still based on Cross Tekken though, to be fair, but it was more talking about his teams and characters that go together. Mm. But yeah, uh, I done an interview with like Dark on that turned into like a four hour thing, and all I was meant to do is ask him like ten questions about Marvel. <laughs> Uh, and the worst thing is, uh, shout out to CT. I, I was blaming him because we always argue, which you will hear again on the other podcast, uh, the Pokemon podcast. Me and CT <laughs> have a little debate. But the thing is, that's normally what I thought made the, co- the podcast go too long because we just argued. But it's, it's clearly just me. Uh, I, I, it was amazing. It was just the funniest fucking thing. <laughs> shout out to Militant CT and argumentative <laughs> C4 because I'm never wrong. Yeah, uh, I it was the fun- the best bit was when you were arguing and you were both agreeing <laughs> yeah. at the same point. You were both like, "No, I'm more right. <laughs> I'm sixty percent right, and you're only forty. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that's so good. Love it. Big up. Shout out to Vegeta. I love him. I love Vegeta. Yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah. Hopefully, get you on for the Zangief one. Uh, anyone in the community on the uh, sorry the SF? Oh, I hate saying it that way. Cross Tekken community. You know, send me a message, uh, inbox me on Facebook, uh, like, subscribe if you don't mind, uh, on the YouTube and the Facebook. I've got Twitter, but I'm not going to tell you where it is because I don't upload nothing at the moment. Uh, I've got Instagram. I used to put up funny pictures. Like, I remember I done one with a clock and a feast bar at, at midnight and it was a midnight feast. I thought that was hilarious, but, <laughs> uh, exactly. See, that's, that's the reaction I had. I it was yeah, funny. it was pretty good, man. I respect it. <laughs> but yeah, at the moment, it's kind of just uh, random pictures. I've got a couple of pictures on my hitbox if anyone wants to see it. Uh, you probably don't. But uh, yeah, I'll, when I've sorted out stuff out, I will let you know. Uh, if anyone's got any ideas for a name for these podcasts, uh, 
that would be great because I've drawn a complete blank. Uh, if as long as it's got to do with cross Tekken and a ranking slash scoring system, tier list, blah blah blah. If you can think of anything, let me know because yeah, I'm I'm mentally guard broken. I can't think of anything. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Uh, thanks everyone for listening. Uh, catch you lot later. I'm not sure who I'm going to do next. If no one gets back to me, it will be Zangief. <laughs> and Fury Fire will be on again. So, yeah, if you want to say your bye bye, Fury Fire. Yeah, yeah. See you later, guys. Hope you enjoyed listening to me rant on about shit. About <laughs> generally what I do. The game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, ladies, guys. See yeah. you.